what is up everybody thank you for clicking on the video today we are going to give you 20 yes 20 players to stash in dynasty so let's get right into it the video starts right now the first player we're going to talk about is dontavian wicks yes he is owned in 78 percent of sleeper leagues but he saw the field about 40 percent of the time in green bay and he currently resides in the shadow of Jaden reed christian watson and maybe even Romeo Dubs, although I think he could be better than Romeo Dubs. But Wicks had been more involved in the offense toward the later part of the season. From weeks 8 to 11, Wicks earned at least four targets in each of those games. He also possesses good size, really good burst for a, for a player of that size. And that's going to serve him well in an offense in Green Bay that is ascending with Jordan Love and Matt LaFleur a really good offensive play car caller these are the situations we want to target in dynasty so if he's available go add dontavian wicks right now tank bigsby is currently listed as the rb2 in jacksonville and while he while he didn't get the opportunities we'd like to see from a running back jacksonville did use a third round pick on him in last year's draft and on the off chance that he's available in your league he could be a nice handcuff to have in an offense that a lot of people are souring on especially if calvin ridley decides to move on however there were multiple signs that towards the end of last year that this offense was tapering off because trevor lawrence was dealing with an injury so there's a real chance that you know travis Etienne takes a little bit of a step back and tank bigsby assumes more of a role as the rb2 in jacksonville greg dulcich i i can't believe that this is possible but Greg Dulcich is only owned in 74% of sleeper leagues. And if you remember, Dulcich was everyone's darling last year. He rose up the early redraft rankings in a hamstring injury, kept him out of the 2023 season for most of the season. He's still just 23 years old. And unless the Broncos sign a free agent tight end or draft one in a class that's really top heavy, and let's face it, the Broncos have a ton of other needs, including, I don't know, this position called quarterback. If they decide to move on from Russell Wilson, they could be packaging draft capital to move up. And they're going to be, gosh, their cap situation, I don't, even, I don't even know how bad it's going to be if they move on from Russell Wilson. The more of the story is they have way, way more needs at other positions to not depend on Greg Dulcich as their tight end one next year. So most likely in 2024, Dulcich is going to be their starting tight end. And here we go again now he's undervalued now's the time to go get him trade for him greg dulcich dynasty stash dynasty target for 2024. trey palmer is up next if he's somehow available in, in your league he's owned in 68 percent of sleeper leagues right now please add him this is a sixth round receiver however he saw the field a lot and he produced late in the season he finished the last four games this includes the playoffs as a top 20 wide receiver or better there's also a chance that Mike Evans leaves in free agency. And currently the reports are mixed regarding whether he will return to the Buccaneers or not. However, everyone does expect the Buccaneers to bring back Baker Mayfield, which can only be a good thing for a deep threat like Trey Palmer. So go at him right now before your league mates can. Cedric Tillman is next up on the list. He's currently owned in 65% of sleeper leagues. And look, Cedric Tillman didn't have the greatest rookie season some people in the fantasy community expected him to, to be much, much better in his rookie year when the Browns selected him in the third round of the 2023 NFL Draft. However, he did play a good amount and has the potential to develop if Deshaun Watson can prove that he's an elite quarterback once again. And he was playing really well towards the end of the season before he uh, ultimately got hurt. Tillman also possesses really good size at 6'3", 213 pounds and good speed, 4'5", 4 4 40 yard dash speed to go with it and if the browns quarterback play is consistent it is possible that tillman becomes more involved in the offense israel banacanda currently owned in 65 percent of sleeper leagues israel banacanda is the number two running back currently with the new york jets the offensive line was terrible last year in new york and that has to be an emphasis for them going forward especially if they want to keep aaron Rodgers healthy and happy abanaconda has a combination of size speed and burst to excel at the next level it's all a matter of getting the opportunity so we shall see but abanaconda could start seeing an increase in opportunities if the jets decide 
against adding a free agent running back. They went down that route last year with Dalvin Cook. It didn't work out. My guess is they they stick with him as their RB2 because they have Brees Hall, because they have Aaron Rodgers. They focus their, their target, their needs on the offensive line. That's where they shift their focus. And as a result, Abanaconda is going to prove to be a good dynasty stash for 2024. John Mechie, this one is simple. I want exposure to the Houston Texans offense. Stashing a player like John Mechie is a way to accomplish this. Mechie has seen the field in a limited capacity. And if anything happens to one of Nico Collins or Tank Dell, John Mechie could see an increased role in one of the most exciting offenses in the NFL. A.T. Perry is up next. Perry only played in 10 games, but he impressed in limited playing time and he might still be available in your dynasty leagues. The Saints depth chart is thin at wide receiver. And this is another team that has cap issues out the wazoo and wide receiver is not necessarily a position of need for them. They have Chris Olave, they have Rashid Shahid, and they have A.T. Perry. So he should be a big part of this offense going forward. And to top it off, Perry has good size, good speed, good burst. He checks a lot of bo boxes. Therefore, you should go stash him in your dynasty league. Trey Tucker is player number nine on our list. He is owned currently in about half of sleeper leagues. Trey Tucker is a speedster who put together some really good games in 2023. The Raiders enter a new era under coach Antonio Pierce, and it's very possible they get a quarterback upgrade as well. There's also the possibility that Devontae Adams move, moves on to New York to join Aaron Rodgers, and this could open up more opportunities in Las Vegas in the offense for a player like Trey Tucker. Andre Yashovas is currently owned in about 50% of sleeper leagues, playing for the Cincinnati Bengals, currently owned in about 50% of sleeper leagues, and he could be poised for a bigger role as soon as next season. And the Bengals, they, they franchise tag T Higgins, but they still could trade him and it's projected that they could get anywhere from a first to an early second round pick for him. So we'll see. We'll see what the Bengals decide to do. But Tyler Boyd is also a free agent that not a lot of people are talking about. So there could be, even if the Bengals choose to ultimately keep T. Higgins, there could be a role in this offense for somebody like Yoshivas, who played at Princeton. And all you got to do is go check out his playerprofiler.com player page to see that this guy's an athletic freak. And if he gets an opportunity, he could seize the day. Parker Washington, who plays for the Jacksonville Jaguars, is currently owned in 50%-ish of sleeper leagues. Let's face it, Calvin Ridley is a free agent. Zay Jones is a 29-year-old wide receiver with an $11 million cap hit in 2024 and is a potential cap casualty. Christian Kirk ended this last year on IR. It took Parker Washington a while to get on the field and a Jamal Agnew injury but all of his production came during the six week stretch to end the 2023 season. And there's definitely a path for an increased role in 2024 and definitely in 2025. For all these reasons and more, Parker Washington in a, in a Jacksonville offense that we talked about already that a lot of people are gonna be down on, it's gonna give you an opportunity to maybe stash away a guy like Parker Washington. At number 12, we have Xavier Hutchinson. Xavier Hutchinson's currently owned in 46% of sleeper leagues and this is simple this is very very much for the same reason that john mechie is on my stash list xavier hutchinson is on my stash list he's one of my favorite prospects in last year's draft and yes he slipped down the draft all the way to the sixth round but if anything happens to nico collins or tank dell this guy's next in line and you're going to want him stashed on your dynasty team at 13 we have noah gray noah gray is next in line behind travis kelsey Gray has proven to get some opportunities even with Kelsey playing a good majority of the snaps. So Gray is that weird tight end handcuff that you're going to want to have because Patrick Mahomes is the quarterback. I don't know if you guys knew this for the, for the Kansas city chiefs. And if anything, anything happens to Kelsey, God forbid, or he decides to retire, who knows, then Gray would get an automatic boost in the rankings. There's very little downside to me in rostering Gray if you have the roster space. So I would go ahead and do it if you do. Another tight end that we need to talk about is Brevin Jordan. He's owned in 44% of sleeper leagues. And I'm interested in Brevin Jordan because he plays for the Texans. He's tied to CJ Stroud. And Dalton, Dalton Schultz has been elevated in the Dallas offense. He was elevated up to tight end eight on the season at one point and tight, tight end eight in fantasy points per game. And if anything were to happen to Schultz, if the Texans decide to bring him back, Jordan is the next man up in line 
and one of the league's best offenses. So Brevin Jordan, for me, is a good, solid stash. Let's talk about Tyler Scott, wide receiver for the Chicago Bears, currently owned in 43% of sleeper leagues. And he didn't do much last season, but he did get on the field, and that's a big deal. And the Bears were a weird offense in the sense that they didn't really pass the ball for a ton of yards. Justin Fields, this was more of a ground and pound, run the ball type of offense. But Scott possesses elite speed and burst. The Bears drafted him in 2023. The Bears could have a brand new quarterback this year as they currently hold the number one pick. Darnell Mooney is scheduled to be a free agent. Who knows what the Bears are going to do at number nine or in free agency. We'll see if they bring in another wide receiver. Assuming that Darnell Mooney moves on in free agency, Tyler Scott becomes the number two. And while it's not likely, I'm assuming the Bears would bring in another wide receiver. The stars could align for Scott as early as next season. He's a solid deep stash. Evan Hull, player number 16 on our list. Evan Hull is currently the RB2 behind Jonathan Taylor. Zach Moss is a free agent, scheduled to be. So is Trey Sermon. And you're going to want running backs in this situation, in this Colts offense with Anthony Richardson. Anthony Richardson got hurt last year. It's true. But he's going to come back this year, and I think he's going to be healthy. And Hole is a guy that's interesting. He's interesting enough to roster. He's one of these running backs in these, these situations that you're going to want. A handcuff for sure. So if anything happens to Jonathan Taylor, assuming the Colts don't make a move to add another running back, I believe Hole's a good stash. Calvin Austin is player number 17 on my list, and the Pittsburgh Steelers are due for a quarterback upgrade. And that could change things for a speedy wide receiver like Calvin Austin. For, for instance, if the Steelers make a move for Russell Wilson, that could unlock a player like Calvin Austin. There's no doubt that Calvin Austin has potential within an offense with his incredible speed. He runs a 4-3-2 40-yard dash, and he's in the 95th percentile in burst, according to playerprofiler.com. The circumstances could shift the fortunes of a player like Austin this offseason so go stash him right now. Player number 18 is Justice Hill. Justice Hill is only owned in 24% of sleeper leagues. And Justice Hill, I mean, this is a Baltimore offense that likes to run the ball. And currently with J.K. Dobbins and Kate Keaton Mitchell uh, suffering season-ending injuries, puts a running back like Justice Hill in a really good position, assuming, e I mean, even if the Baltimore Ravens decide to add a running back, there's likely going to be a role for him in 2024. He was also sneaky efficient. We talked about this on the Dynasty Roundtable, which is a show on the Player Profiler YouTube channel that you need to watch with my guy, Aaron Stewart. Aaron Stewart pointed out, Justice Hill, top 20 in juke rate, breakaway run rate, yards per reception, yards per touch on the NFL's most run heavy offense with Lamar Jackson that that alone is a reason to stash him and stash him right now number 19 is kevin harris and in 2020 kevin harris tallied over 1100 rushing yards in 10 games as a college sophomore averaging six yards per carry and 15 touchdowns in the sec he also tallied a 21 159 and one receiving line an interesting note about kevin harris comes to us from aaron stewart on twitter shout out to the at ffb captain Ramondre Stevenson and Ezekiel Elliott combined for four breakaway runs on 340 carries. Kevin Harris, same year, last year, two breakaway runs on 16 carries. So that you can make an argument, while not the, the sample size is really low, that Kevin Harris was the more explosive running back in New England. For that reason, with a regime change, you should go stash Kevin Harris. And finally, last but not least, two running backs for you, both with the LA Rams, Ronnie Rivers, who's owned in 10% of sleeper leagues, and Zach Evans, who's owned in 46% of sleeper leagues. This comes to us from Aaron Stewart. Again, shout out to the at FFB captain on Twitter. Go follow him right now. What Kyron Williams did last season with the Rams was equally as impressive as it was unpredictable. But we shouldn't disregard the backups in that system. Zach Evans and Ronnie R Rivers are likely available in your leagues. And since Todd Gurley left the Rams in 2019, the Rams have not had the same leading rusher in back-to-back -back seasons. That would be Cam Akers, Sony Michelle, Cam Akers, and in 2023, Kyron Williams. That's the mic drop right there. 
ghost stash those guys. So that's 20, actually 21 players that you should stash in Dynasty. If you liked it, click the like button. If you want more of it, subscribe to the channel. And you can follow me on Twitter at Seth underscore D-I-E-W-O-L-D. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. Be good, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.